This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Here's what I like about the divine plane. It sounds really hard for the flesh, but it's, it's pretty awesome for grace. Grace will help me on the divine plane. If you're interested in the divine plan, grace helps you get to the divine plan. Grace helps me to treat people better than myself. Hey, everybody. I want to give you a personal invitation to attend the Grace Life Conference, The Reunion, July the 11th through the 13th. It's a reunion. It's a gathering of believers, and it's freedom. When people understand grace, they are empowered to change. So don't miss this opportunity. I'll see you at Grace Life 2024, July the 11th through the 13th. I'll see you there. This is your world. So let's vow to make it a better place. Let every While the outward expression of godly living as taught by grace cannot always be distinguished from the mor morality of human life, there are standards of godly living that are beyond the conception of the natural mind, the divine plane. A standard of godly living that's beyond the conception of the natural mind, the divine plane. And therefore, it's of a higher order than, the, than, the, than moral, the best moral teachers or philosophers. They are even higher than the highest standards of the law that came by Moses. I want to know about this high standard. So go to Matthew 22, verse 37 and 39. All standards of conduct under the law were summed up in two commandments. Here is the standard of conduct, conduct under the law that came from Moses, and it's under these two commandments. Verse 37 and then verse 39. Here was the standard of the law, and I want to show you the difference of where we live today. Verse 37 says, Jesus, Matthew 22, verse 37, Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Verse 39 he says, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now remember, under, in Matthew, Jesus is responding and talking as a prophet under the old covenant, okay? And look at what he said. He's, he's, he's come to fulfill the law, and he's come to fulfill this law. Thou shalt love the, the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Now, some of you are saying, well, what's wrong with that? You can't love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. I tried it. It's hard. The truth about the matter, to, to, lo to love God with all your soul, there's so much going on in your soul. He don't have all your soul. With all your mind, your mind ain't totally always 24 hours a day dedicated to God. The only person that could fulfill that was Jesus. Amen. And then he said something that really got me. He said, the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor. And watch this. Look at the standard of this love, like you love yourself. So that means I might not really get real, real true love because you're going to only love me like you love yourself, and I've discovered you don't love yourself. So this, this is a condition of the two commandments that Jesus was said as fulfilling the law. But that love for God, uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul here, it's only a human level love. It is with a human heart, soul, and mind. To love one's neighbor as oneself is also only human. 
because the love of self is human. All standards of life, however, under grace are summed up by Jesus in these words. Go to John 15, verse 12. John 15, verse 12. Mm -hmm. This is my commandment. Oh, yeah. That you love one another. Watch the standard. As I have loved you. So I am loving you like Jesus loved me. And Paul repeated this thought in Ephesians 5 and 2. Turn there real quick. This is huge. You know, I notice every time I teach on love, and don't nobody be hollering and screaming on love because it's, it's just like, <laughs> you, got, you got anything else for today, Rem? Because, I mean, you know. You know, you don't even know what I'm going through, and you, you tell me to love, I will love her as soon as she apologized to me. That's what, that's how this gonna happen. That's how, that's how this gonna happen, because I ain't no punk. Hey, who called you a punk? Why, why you, oh, 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 you don't love yourself, so your love is limited. Your love is limited. You, you're, you're trying to treat other people like you treat yourself, and you don't treat yourself good. Jesus said, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. So the standard of our love now is, is him. And hath given himself for an offering, and he gave himself a sacrifice to God for the sweet-smelling savor. See, the love of Christ for the believer is a divine love and was even unto death. That's on a much higher level. That's on a much higher level. This love is a divine love and even on to death. I mean to tell you, somebody said, love you to die for you. Oh, I don't know about that, Reverend. I don't know about that. I, I, I mean, ask yourself, is there anybody you know that you would die for? And he said that love should go to that place. That's, that's a high level. He's asking us to love on a, div that's, that's a divine level of love. That's not a human level, that's a divine level. And, and so as I was kind of researching this divine plane, I was bumping into this stuff that was kind of hard on my flesh because it takes it to a divine level. I love you and willing to die for you is divine level love. So I pause and say, do I really want this love? I finished this sermon months ago. But every weekend I kind of, you know, oh, that's a, that's a loved one. <laughs> if I don't teach it, they won't expect it from me. <laughs> the divine plane. The divine plane, oh my goodness. The love of Christ, a love even unto death. So when the believer is called upon to love as Christ loved, he is asked to love with a divine love and nothing less. You see, the golden rule says this. Uh, go, to, go to Matthew chapter 7 and 12. All things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. Oh, that's interesting. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that, that men should do to you, what you, want, what you want and will for somebody to do to you, do you even to them, do you even so to them, for this is the law and the prophet. So they made it plain where it comes from. How you want people to treat you, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you. All right, I want you to do to me, and then I'll be willing to do to you what I want you to. That's on a level, but it's not on a divine level, a divine plane. Now, on a divine plane, it's not based on, you know, and that's, that, become, that has become a problem. We kind of get upset because when people don't treat us the way we want to be treated, then we, we got a problem. I'm mad at you because you didn't treat me like I would have treated you. I, I would have called you 
and prayed with you, but you never called me, so I'm mad at you because I expect something from you that you didn't perform. Now, we can't have no relationship because I'm basing your care of me based on what I would do. And that's just that's really not fair. You, you really shouldn't get in relationships and, 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 and that relationship goes on because, you know, I, I won't let you be who you are. You need to be who I think you need to be. Well, God, dog. But Jesus takes it on a divine level, Philippians chapter 2 and 3, and then just stay there in, in verse 5 and 7. Look, uh, look at this in the NLT, uh, Philippians 2 and 3. Man, I, you, you, you should have did this for me. Why? Because I would have did it for you. That's not good enough, dude. That's not good enough. Sometimes in a relationship, we expect for people to fulfill our formulas, and we want to cut out their heart. I, I want to do things out of my heart, not because you make me do it, because that's what you would do. I ain't you. I ain't you. Well, if it was me, then I would do it. I, 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 I ain't you. Okay, now that may be good or bad. I don't know. All right, now watch this. Don't be selfish. Here's a higher level now. Watch this. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. And there's this huge spirit around that says that everybody, everybody works hard to be something. Everybody wants to be noticed. Everybody works hard to be important. Everybody. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. What is that? Thinking of others as better than yourself. That's the divine plane. Thinking of others as better than myself, that's the divine plane. Here's what I like about the divine plane. It sounds really hard for the flesh, but it's, it's pretty awesome for grace. Grace will help me on the divine plane. If you're interested in the divine plane, grace helps you get to the divine plane. Grace helps me to treat people better than myself. Not to treat people the way I want to be treated, but to treat them better than the way I want to be treated. How can I come up with a way of better? See, grace will help you to come up with a way better. This is where people can see the distinction between the grace that we live and, and, and the desire to want to be validated by other people. I want to live on the divine plane where when, when, I, when I walk away from you, you think, boy, there's something different about that dude. He's treating me better than he would treat himself. This is church stuff I'm talking. I know some of you think, well, it's optional. I'm going to stick with the selfish level. <laughs> selfish level feels better. I want to treat people better than myself. I want to treat people better than myself. I don't want to look down on anybody. And that and the thing I love about it is you can't do this by yourself. You're not going to be able to walk in this by yourself. And so it shows a greater need for you to be dependent on the Spirit of grace to help you to live on the divine level. That's why I, 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 have, I finally resolved it. It was, was why I'm teaching it, because it wasn't that better. I, that, that's why I want it, because in doing so, in, in going towards the divine level, it puts me in a position every day. I need you, Jesus. I got to depend on you, Jesus. I got to depend on you, Jesus. Uh, your selfishness is rising up. I mean, I wake up in the morning selfish. I know you don't, because you're spiritual, but I wake up in the morning selfish. I'm hungry. I don't want to talk to nobody, do nothing. Don't, and then, hey, hey, don't, hey, don't talk to me right now. I had not had my coffee. I'm hungry. Stay tuned for the continuation of today's message right after this. Hey, everybody. I want to give you a personal invitation to attend the Grace Life Conference, the reunion, July the 11th through the 13th. It's a reunion. It's a gathering of believers, and it's freedom. When people understand grace, they are empowered to change. So don't miss this opportunity. I'll see you at Grace Life 2024, July the 11th through the 13th. I'll see you there. Now for the conclusion of today's message. 
This whole thing is about developing your dependence on God so He can do the work. But we keep limiting the opportunities to depend on Him more. I can't, I can't, that level on my own? Impossible. That level with the Spirit of grace? Yes. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Look at the next verse, verse 4. Ah. Uh, don't look, don't look out only for your own interests. You know, I'm trying, I, listen, I'm trying to look out for me and mine. I'm, I'm, I'm looking out for me, myself, and mine. It doesn't take the spirit of grace to help you with that. You can do that all by yourself. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. When's the last time you took an interest in somebody else other than yourself? Because what this does, it says, I can't do this. But you can. Can you help me to take interest in somebody else other than me? The whole, this whole deal is about the defeat of self-dependence. This whole Christianity deal is about the defeat of self-dependence. And, and I, I thought, well, yeah, I can do this. And that was the whole deal of why the law came up because, you know, law, the law came into being because, you know, <clears throat> Moses came down and, and the, the word uh, to Israel, and, and, and here's what they responded. They said, oh, we can do this. And, and, and God was like freaking out, are you serious? Do you not see now, by now, that you need me? And when they made that declaration, oh, we can do everything God said, the next chapter was the introduction of the law. The next chapter was, I'm going to give them a law that's impossible for them to do, to break them down where they can't do nothing but sin, and then they're going to recognize that they need me. And then his mercy kicked in. He says, well, all right, I, I got to give them something else along with the law. I'll give them the sacrificial system of bringing animals to the altar so I can bless them through the sacrifice, because I already know that this law I'm giving, they're not going to be able to keep. People don't even realize that. You know, we got the big movies, Ten Commandments, oh, here's the law of God. He gave you something that you can't, he gave you something you can't keep, and he gave you something that you were going to surely fail in. And the wages of sin is death, and there were hundreds of thousands of people that fell dead, that died over the issue of the law. They created a golden calf, and a whole bunch of people fell, fell in the earth. And all of a sudden, I thought, boy, it's pretty important for us to uh, uh, figure out how to depend on you. So I'm developing in my spiritual life, in my spiritual walk, to really get rid of everything I think I can do without him. Because for me to finally get to the point where I can do things without him and I don't need him is called ungodliness. Because now I'm living a life disregarding God. I don't even need God to bless what I do now because I've so disregarded him. Wow. And religion is just slowly putting us back into the very thing that's got us in the situation before where we're just disregarding God and we don't need God and God helps those who help themselves. And in everything that deals with God and religion, you got to insert yourself in. You know, God will take the, you take the first step and God will take another one. And God is like, dude, you are not me. I am God all by myself. I don't need nobody else. And you, 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 I'm, I'm him for you. You, you human species were the ones to eat of that fruit in the garden and declared your independence from me. 
And me and my mercy have been just trying to show you. I gave you all these books in the Old Testament to show you failure after failure after failure after failure until you needed me and show you what happened when you depend on me. Lock you up in a lion's den and put a seal on the door where nobody would open it. You ain't, what, what you going to do? What you going to do? You can't run and get a gun. You're locked in. What you going to do? You can't go get no food to feed the lion. You is the food. <laughs> but sometimes when you're put in a position where you can't do nothing but depend on God, that's when he shows up in your lion den and shut the mouths of the lion. That's when he shows up in your fiery furnace and everybody, he... <laughs> I, in David's, David's time, God could have killed the bear. He didn't. God could have killed the lion. He didn't. But for a man... Excuse me, that ain't a word. I'm just talking to the Lord, right? I feel some. For a man who depended on God, a boy who depended on God. I killed the lion, I killed the bear. What is this uncircumcised Philistine? You know what he was saying? Here's how I killed the lion and the bear I have a covenant with God. Mm. And with my covenant with God, the lion was taken care of, the bear was taken care of, and this Philistine going to be taken care of. And I'm going to cut his head off and hold it up so everybody can see the work of God, the power when you depend on God as the only one that can help you. And I believe God wants you to cut the head off of all of the circumstances and situations in your life, and he wants you to hold that head up and say, look at what God has done. Look at what God has done. They said I couldn't do this. They they said this wouldn't be done. They said that wouldn't be done. But I'm holding up evidence of the power of the Almighty God when you trust and depend on Him. Man. What a path, man. What a path to wake up every day and see your selfishness trying to get ahead of the day. You have to pull it back and say, no, I, I, I need you, God. I, I was standing before a window this morning just looking up, and I said, uh, I, I, I got to have you today. I, um, I don't even want to think about finishing this day in victory without letting you know I can't do it without you. I mean, I can do it on a regular standard and then pat myself on the back after it's over with and it'll still be insufficient. I don't want to do that. I strive for that divine plane. If and when I get to heaven, not if, but when I get to heaven, it's going to be like if they were to ask me a question like, why should we let you in? It will not be all of the things that were accomplished in my life by me. My answer would be because I depend on Jesus as the only one that can help me. And right now, I need him to help me to get through these gates right now. If I have to, if you, if you ask me any more questions, don't let me call on my Savior. Now, you don't want to meet your boss. I know your boss personally now. Does your lifestyle reflect who you are in Christ? God wants us to live on a divine level, but that's impossible with our human ability. In the series, Living Life at God's Altitude, Creflo Dollar leads us on a journey of discipline through grace. The very purpose of grace is to produce in the believer a life on that divine plane. Thinking of others as better than myself, that's the divine plane. Grace helps me to treat people better than myself. Not to treat people the way I want to be treated, but to treat them better than the way I want to be treated. Only grace can take you there. You can't do it. 
You can get all three messages today. Simply visit creflodollarministries.org and click eStore. Scan the QR code or call the number on your screen to get yours before they run out. Look no further for encouragement to walk in the grace of God. The Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app provides rewarding content that is sure to nourish your mind and soul. Treat yourself to enriching messages from Pastor Dollar on grace and walking in the likeness of Christ. Download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app to stream messages of hope, grace, and understanding when you need them most. The 2020 Vision Partner Program at Creflo Dollar Ministries is more than a program. It's a relationship designed to make a high impact in your life, our lives, and the lives of millions around the world. Text 2020 Partner to 51555 to become a 2020 Vision Partner today. God has given us a grace gift to help overcome the limitations of our understanding so that we can receive clear direction. Introducing Grace Life Academy. Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access to hundreds of hours of online teachings from Creflo Dollar, features like e-courses, study guides, quizzes, and more. To get started on your 30-day free trial, simply text or sign up online by visiting mygracelifeacademy.com. I don't ever want to take for granted that you've received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And there's no better way to embark upon a new stage in your life than to enter into a personal relationship with Jesus. So if you want to become born again and begin an exciting, intimate relationship with Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer with me, and I'll, I'll say it so you can repeat after me. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died and was raised from the dead and has forgiven all of my sin. And I receive him into my life right now as my Lord and personal Savior. So by faith, I declare that I am saved. Praise God. Now, that simple prayer change your entire eternal destination. And we want to welcome you to the family of God. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.